In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a microwave, and in this case, it's going to be right above this range. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. Your channel is all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for in turn for making this video. So installing a microwave is pretty easy, but I'm going to walk you through it. Here are the items that you'll need that come standard with most of the microwaves. We got our mounting bracket that's going to be used to hang it above the range. We got our template to mark the wall to hang the bracket. We got our template that's going to go in the cabinet so we know where to drill our holes out for the microwave. We got our hardware and as far as tools go if we take a look over here we got a impact driver that has a 10 millimeter socket on it and you don't have to have this you can also get away with a Phillips bit but I like to use it and I'll show you here later why. And then I have a 3 8 inch drill bit that's going to be used to drill the holes out in the template that's going to go in the cabinet. And also a 2 inch hole saw. 2 foot level, a tape measure, and a pencil. In order to use this template, I'm going to have to trim off along this dotted line up top first using scissors. This microwave is made by GE and I'm not sure if every model of the GE requires the same template and needs to be cut down, but I have installed microwaves in the past that do require the template to be cut down like this. Because dust is going to be created while I'm installing the microwave, I'm just going to cover up my range with a piece of plastic, but you can use a blanket or anything of that nature as well. I'm now here in the opening above my range and if you wanted to know this is a 30 inch opening it's the same width as the range below and now what I got to do is find the center of this space and then we want to plumb a line so simply just measure evenly from each side. And now that we found center I'm just going to take a two foot level and plumb a line down. I'm now going to hold the rear wall template up into place and I'm going to line up the center line of this template with that center line we just made with the level and make sure our paper is tight to the top of that cabinet, which that looks really good right there. And now what I need to do is mark each hole down here at B and A. And I'm going to use a sharp item and this is just a punch so I can just score the wall because I just need to know the height in which I got to put my bolts. So I know my elevation is right here at this hole and right here at this hole. And I'm now going to put a line from point to point. You really don't have to draw a level line here. I just do it just to make sure I know from point to point it's level. Here's where I mark for the one hole to be drilled. Here's the other. And in this case, I'm going to be using a 5H drill bit for the toggle bolts that were sent. And then over here as well. And in this case, after I drilled the holes, I realized there's blocking in behind here. So I do not have to use the toggle bolts. So if you don't have blocking in behind here, which you should because you have cabinets, you'll have to use the toggle bolts. For reference, here are the toggle bolts that were sent. If there was not blocking behind here, these would simply just fold and push back into the wall after it was in through the bracket. But since I don't have to do that, I will be using the hex screws that came with it. So these are all I will need to anchor into the wall. I'm now going to place the bracket right up to where we made those holes and secure it into place. And I'll be using the wood screws that came with the microwave. And this is the reason why I like to use a 10 millimeter socket. It's because when you drive these screws in, it requires a lot of torque and sometimes the Phillips bit will slip. And it doesn't hurt to double check with a level to make sure you didn't get off while you're installing it. And this looks good. I also wanted to point out, if you do have a vent, this is the template you would use to cut that out for as well. I don't put a vent onto my microwaves. I just let it suck the air up off the range and then blow out the top. But if you do, that's a template you would need to cut out for that. It's now time to use the upper cabinet template. And in order to use it, we got to see what size our trim is as far as how far the cabinet comes out. So I know I have a one inch thick frame, so I need to trim off this bottom part so this will go tight against the wall. You could also use a utility knife and place the paper on a board or a piece of cardboard and just cut right down the line that way as well. Now in order to use this template, as you can see here in this area it says filler block area. I need to install filler blocks right here before I drill out the hole. So what I got to do is this is the left side here. I'm just going to fold this real quick just get a quick reference and hold it up about where it goes just to see the vicinity where I got to place the block. 
So I know that block needs to go right about there. So I'm just going to hold it right up here and I'm using a one inch thick block. This is actually a piece of Trex, just good enough to use for a filler. And this is just going to allow a place for that bolt to secure to without hurting the cabinet. I'm just going to put two just enough to hold it for now. And now I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm now going to hold the template up under the cabinet and make sure the back here is goes tight against the wall. And again, if you have a roof vent, this is where you would cut out for that as well. So now I got to mark each place where the J area is. We're just going to hold it center of that line. And I know I need a mark right here. So I'm just going to take a utility knife and punch a hole through there. And then on this side, now that the bolt holes are marked, I got a mark for the center of the cord that's going to come up through the cabinet. I'm now going to take a drill with a 3 8 drill bit on it and drill out each hole we marked for the front bolts. Oh. And now I attached a two inch hole saw to drill out for the cord. This next step requires two people and I got the two bolts that are designed to go in through the cabinet into the microwave that came with the microwave. So again, we're going to have to have a helper here. So come on over here and we'll go ahead and take this microwave, set it up on the bracket. There's little notches in the microwave that fits onto each notch on this bracket. It's going to lift up, then we're going to fish these bolts down into the top of that microwave. When you lift the microwave up onto the bracket, you're gonna to have to fish the power cord up through the hole we drilled, and then you're gonna to to reach in and find the hole and then put the screw or bolt down into the microwave to secure it onto the cabinet. And as you know, there are two bolts that go into the top of the microwave, so be sure to put the bolt in each hole. Now that the cabinet's secured, I'm just gonna plug it into the dedicated circuit right here on this cabinet, and you can check out the video in the top right hand corner of the screen of when I install these cabinets and put the outlet in. Now that the microwave's hung, I'm gonna install the filters and it's gonna be ready for use. Now that everything's installed, I just wanna double check to make sure it works and it turns on fine. And now I'm just gonna make sure the fan works and it's working as well. I feel air blowing out the top. So we know everything's working as it's supposed to. And the lights up inside, looks like everything is working fine. Now, if you want to purchase this microwave or any of the tools used in this video, I'll put a link to them in the description below. If you're curious to see how this works, as you can see that bracket fits up in the slots in the bottom of the microwave. And then up here above in the cabinet, the bolts are taking the pressure from the weight. So that's what's holding it into place. And then there's the cord coming up through the cabinet. Pretty simple. If you'd like to see how I installed this dishwasher, check out this video. It'll help you out.